okay, it's looking really good so far. Um, now all I have to do is adhere my hinges and we'll be ready to go. So it's basically perfectly fit in there. Um, and then I will be right back. I'm just going to put the tape on the back of this and use my art glitter glue and attach it. And then I'll be able to attach my pages to it. Um, I kind of prefer to put this down first and then attach my pages because in case I mess it up, I didn't really, you know, jack up my pages. <laughs> anyway, um, I will be back when I'm all finished. Well, actually, this will be the end of the tutorial. Now, at this point, um, oh, wait, no, maybe not. I apologize. Duh, I haven't done the inside cover and back page. So I'll definitely um, be back with that portion of the tutorial. Okay, for our inside cover page, we're going to do a, something a little bit different than I've done before. So we're going to take a piece of paper. Let me start off with this one. And I'm using craft cardstock because I want it to match um, my inside cover. So I would use a matching um, coordinating color because there's actually going to be two skinny pockets, okay? And I'm going to show you exactly what these are going to do in a minute. But your measurements for this piece are... <clears throat> four inches and you're going to score at a half inch so that will make it three and a half okay and then it's going to be four inches by nine and seven eighths like I have written here you're going to score at your half inch line and nine and three eighths okay that's what it looks like on here yes nine and three eighths okay then your cover um, your decorative paper is going to be eight and three quarters by three and three eighths. Okay. So eight and three quarters by three and three eighths. Okay. And then you're going to want to ink your edges. So, um, I'm just going to get my score tape and I'm going to do this real quick. Cause like I want this down really good and I want it to almost look like a hidden, um, pocket. So we're going to try to do that together. And of course, if it doesn't work, you won't see this, but I'm pretty sure it will. So, but I want to put the first piece down so that I can see my measurements for the second one. And I wanted to show you these steps of what I'm doing. Um, so in other words, you're kind of doing this with me this time. So, sorry, I'm just trimming off my excess here because it's in my way. Um, Okay, same thing on this side. And again, I'm going to trim off my excess. Oops, I'm making a hot mess up in here. Okay, all right, let me move all this out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to get my album here. And don't forget to burnish those in like I just did. So that's why I'm always happy to use glue. Okay. So I'm going to line this up, okay, I'm going to tuck in all my little edges like so. And I know this is going to be a little bit complicating, but I'm going to leave a 1 8 inch border from the corner and the top, which is approximately where your paper is lined at anyway. I'm just bringing it over a little bit more because I don't want any bulk at um, on this end towards in here because then it won't close properly. So you should have a 1 8 inch border before you get to the fold, okay? So I'm just going to burnish that in really good. Ah, I'm making a mess up in here. Okay. And then I'm going to have another pocket. Okay, but 
let me go and adhere this down so I don't forget. Just distressing my edges here. Okay. Yikes. And then I'm going to glue this on. And again, I have that border. Hold on, I'm going to flip this around so I can really see what I'm doing. Make sure I don't mess this up. And you want to make sure you pick up any excess glue because you don't want your pocket to accidentally dry closed. That's for sure. So we have a very extremely thin pocket, but you're going to see what that's going to do. It's going to hold some um, small, um, kind of like a small little folio. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And I had... Oh my goodness, where did it go? I had my paper. Oh, there it is. Duh. Okay. Okay, so after my big boo-boo, I figured out the second um, envelope, or shall I say pocket. This one is going to be um, 9 and 7 eighths by um, 4 and 7 eighths, but I actually took off about a 16th of an inch after I cut it at four and seven eighths inch, okay? You're gonna score it on a half inch on all sides, and then you're going to, um, of course, add your tape and um, get it ready to be folded over. Then your paper, is, your decorative paper, is going to be, I did kind of the same thing. Um, I cut it at eight and three quarters by four and a quarter. So the four and a quarter I kept the same, but at the eight and three quarters, I took off another sixteenth of an inch. Okay. And then I'm going to lay this out. I went ahead and inked it. And I'm going to go ahead and glue it on there. Trying to work a little bit quicker than I normally do. My kids are home today and we're going to go to the park in a little bit. So I want to make sure I get this completed first before we go. So I'm just going to furnish it in. Make sure there's no bubbles. Okay. And I missed the corner there. I knew it. I felt it. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that I did last time. I'm just going to line them up together. And I'm going to leave a small gap. Okay. And it's hardly going to be noticeable. I forgot to miter my edges. You definitely want to do that because you don't want to see that. And if you leave it there, you'll see it. <clears throat> so I'm going to attach these real quick. And again, I'm going to flip this around because it's easier for me to see it this way. 
I'm going to attach my glue. Get my little spot that I missed there. <clears throat> I know I'm being messy today, I'll tell you. And then I'm just going to butt it up towards the edge here. Make sure it is lined up, right aligned with the other one. And it is. And then I can place it down. I'm going to get some of this excess glue off my hands. And then I'm going to burnish it in. Okay, and then again, wipe up any excess glue on my edges here. Now, you have several pockets, well, two pockets that you can add um, some extra little um, Okay, so today for my inside back cover page, I want to make a correspondence page. And so we're going to do this together. Normally, I have a perfect square to work with, like a six by six, five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So this is my first time where I'm going to have something that is not exactly the same. But anyway, so I do have a piece of chipboard and it's a very thin piece of chipboard too, okay? And then I have my cardstock, which I've already glued on there with my art glitter glue. And of course, I distress my edges. So you're going to need your chipboard. Um, and if you don't, then I would just use um, uh, like double up on your cardstock, okay? Because you just want it a little bit thicker to hold the ribbon in place and stuff like that so it won't tear. I do suggest thin chipboard, okay? You don't want it too fat because then you're going to have difficulty um, closing and opening your book. Um, so the measurements I have are eight and three quarters by, this was supposed to be seven and three quarters. I accidentally did it with a little boo-boo. So I want you to do the same exact thing, okay? And we're going to try something together using the seam binding ribbon that Tamara sent me. Um, normally I use just regular standard ribbon, but I love the matching cardstock that Tamara sent me. Sorry, I almost thought my computer blinked out on me. I apologize that I am looking for, here it is. Okay, so I'm really loving this blue right here, or I, actually I could use this cream color. Let's try that. I think that would look really well together. So this is what we're going to try. I apologize if I seem a little bit off key. And it's only because I don't know what <laughs> I, like I said, I normally do this with a, um, a square piece of paper. Um, so this is new for me. So I'm going to try something different and see if this works. So, and I need to make sure that I have enough seam binding ribbon too. And I may, I may not. Um, let me double check on that and I'll be right back because basically there are going to be no measurements for this. Okay. I know it's kind of, it sounds odd, but the way we're going to do this, um, we're just going to go ahead and place the ribbon on here um, and do our best that we possibly can um, to make this correspondence board without actually using <laughs> measurements. What? I know. Um, so anyway, I'll be right back. Let me try to make sure um, I have enough ribbon here. Okay, so I got it to work. So let me kind of explain what I did here. So um, of course, I got some ribbon and I had this little um, hot pink with little white polka dots. Okay, and then what I did was, okay, I took a strip 
of ribbon and I went to each of the four corners, right? And I stopped just prior um, to the actual corner piece, okay? And I did that, so I did one piece this way and then I cut it. See, and then I used my score tape back here to keep it in place for the time being and then I'm gonna glue it down. Then I did, so I did like a crisscross, an X, okay? And I did the same thing on this page and then again folded them over then the very next thing I did was is once I did my crisscross I took my quilt ruler okay and I measured the line directly the center line so here's my center line coinciding with right in between here okay and then that's how I got my centers right here so then I went ahead and I took a strip of ribbon and then went from here to here on this one. Then for this one, all I did was make a little tick mark over here where that should land. I just made sure that it was straight and it is, okay? And then I was able to fold it over here on the back. And then I went ahead and did the same thing on the bottom. And that's it, as simple as that. So now I have my, and I wish I knew that it was this easy before, okay? Because I would have done a whole lot more of these. Um, so now we have our correspondence board, okay? Now I am going to use some um, buttons, okay? But first of all, I wanna glue these down um, in the centers. So I'm just going to go underneath and that's why I love that this has a, um, so I'm just going to glue it down and then let that dry. Okay. And if you want to just hold it down just for a minute while it sets in place a little bit. And then you're just going to keep on moving along until you have it all done. And then with my glue gun, I'll actually put my buttons on there. But I do want to run um, some string through my ribbons first so that you can't see the glue underneath. Um, just to make a little quick tie. And then just hold it down. So I will get this done and then all I have to do is add it to the inside back cover and that is done. And then I will give you the measurements for your outside cover and the edge of the side of the book. So the front and back and sides, I mean side, duh. So I will be right back. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. All we have to do is um, do our cover and then also I need to give you the measurements for the mat. But first right now I have um, the measurements for the cover and what I did do was is I went back, I believe three inches. <clears throat> oh no, I lied. What? Okay, one and a half. Uh, okay, no, no, no. Um, about one and three eighths inches from the front, I mean, from the front here to the side or whatever. And then of course I measured it in the middle, which is four inches, okay, because this is eight inches long. So that made it easy to figure out my um, center measurements, okay. And then I also cut about, I wanted to use um, two colors for my ribbon, that's gonna be my closure. So the seam binding ribbon is about 12 inches. And so I did four of those. Okay, and so I'll go ahead and attach those and um, kind of burnish them in with um, my glue gun um, just right here at the tips to make sure that um, they don't move and stay. But, um, and what I mean by burnish it in is, is that I make sure that the glue is very thin. Okay, so um, for your cover page, I'm not doubling it up this time like I normally do. <clears throat> I just didn't want to make the book 
any thicker than what it is. So for my cover pages, I did seven and seven eighths by eight and seven eighth inches. Okay, so you'll need two of those for your front and back. And then for your side, it will be three and one eighth inches by seven and seven eighths. So this is what I'm gonna use for my front and back. Now, you do have to kind of consider that your back um, will be possibly laying on something. Mine's not going to be laying on anything. So um, <clears throat> it's gonna go on a shelf. So I'm probably going to keep my cover um, you know, pretty thin. Um, I will add some embellishments, but I'll make sure that I have them glued down very well so that there's no issues um, with um, bending or anything like that of the flower. So I will get those on and then I will be back with the mat measurements, okay?
Woof, we are to the end. So your mats are going to be like this. So your base page is going to be seven and a quarter by eight and one eight. And then your decorative um, page is going to be, or your decorative that goes on top is seven and one eighth by eight. Okay, so seven and a quarter by eight and one eighth, and then seven and one eighth by eight. And, and then it should look something like this. And I am going to use um, probably the same tab that I used earlier from my bow bunny. Let me see. Not my bow bunny, bow bunny. Or I might use this little one. I think I like this one. I just think that this round one will stick out too far, but I like this one. So I'll probably use this one since I haven't used it yet. And um, I'll show you when it's all done, guys. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you all have a wonderful and fabulous day and stay tuned for more tutorials. I can't even talk today. More tutorials soon. Bye.